Good morning girls, welcome back to the vlog. Today I'm going to be just one bit sissy, but I do have a beautiful, gorgeous Hello. little Sophia joining me. Today we're going to be going through a back workout. So the point of today's session is to focus on creating a little bit of width and definition in Sophia's back. So obviously when focusing on the perfect hourglass shape, you do want to create the illusion of a nice tight waist and by creating back width and definition it really helps that V taper illusion. So I'm going to take you through a few of my favorite exercises. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. A She's a little bit nervous ready, yeah. <laughs> but I said don't be. Look yeah. at look at this girl's back. Turn around, show us. Sophia has been with us for so long now. How many years? Since end of 2017. So like end of three. 2017. Anyway, Let's, Let's get do into it. it. Are you ready for this ready. challenge? She's ready. Let's go. Okay, girls. So to warm up before getting into the nitty gritty, because I think it really is important to warm up the area of the body that we're working. I'm going to get Sophia to do two separate exercises and they're both going to involve activating and utilizing those back muscles under no load. So that's what we're going to start with. First of all, we're gonna do arm circles and then we're gonna go into arm crossovers. I am gonna get Sophia to turn around for this because I'm gonna show you how we're utilizing her back muscles under just a body weight load, but still focusing on contracting that area of the body. So turning around, you count for me, sis. We've got 10. Okay, so nice and light and every, every turn, I'm gonna get Sophia to really squeeze through her back muscles. I'm even gonna get you to come a little bit closer. Because, okay, and every, every time she comes back, she's squeezing in. So we're just, we're, we're not working, we're just warming up. And to do that properly, we're getting a nice squeeze through our back. So once you hit 10, I want you to change directions. Sophia's going to hit 10 more. And then we're going to switch. From there, we're gonna go into arm crossovers. So you're crossing your arms at the front and every time Sophia comes back, she's contracting her back. So same sort of thing. Nice. So 10 each way. All right, so we're gonna do that through twice. So, so I'm gonna get Sophia to do it through one more time and then we're pretty much gonna be at the point where we can start placing our back under load. We're gonna get into this workout. Take it away, Bia. First exercise, we're gonna do assisted banded pull-ups. So, if your gym has an assisted pull-up machine, you can use that. We don't have that here, and personally, I like to use the band because you can kind of set it up anywhere. It's a really easy, system to use if you're not in a really kitted out gym or the pull-up machine's always taken. And with your bands, you can kind of increase the difficulty as you get stronger by reducing the heavy resistance of the band to a lighter version. So I do really like this. So what we're gonna be starting with is a slightly wider grip. So your grip's gonna be outside of your shoulder sphere. Yeah. And we're going to focus really on the width aspect of your V taper. So don't get me wrong girls, we're not looking to grow enormous backs. <laughs> and by doing these sort of workouts, that's not going to be what happens. Muscle growth to that extent takes a lot of time, a lot of calories, and a lot of progressive overload. Right now, we're really just looking to enhance our V taper and our definition. So, the fear is set up. She's going to put her foot into the band. She's actually starting on a bench, so I'm on my tippy toes, yeah. so I can talk to you. She's starting on a bench because it's just easier to post yourself up that way. You can see her grip is slightly wider, and we're going to go into a set of eight reps, all right? Fia, take it away. So she's going to stretch all the way down and squeeze up. And I'm gonna help her stay balanced and back down, and that's one. Stretching out and squeeze. 
squeezing up. Two, that is perfect. And three, perfect. You got this. Four, that's it. Well done, she's really killing it. I'm obsessed with Sophia's back. Five, that's six. Yep. Four, two seven. more, two more. I'm gonna help you. Seven, and that's where if you're with a friend, help us this out, help her get up. Eight, that's it, well done, Smithy. Woo, back onto the bench and having a little rest. Girls, this exercise is a really tricky one. I'm not gonna superset Sophia with this. I want her really focusing on the movement and um, taking the time to do the exercise and resting in between sets. We're gonna have 60 seconds rest, then we're gonna get back into our second set. We're gonna do three sets of this one. So with this next exercise, we are gonna superset. So I'm gonna have Sophia doing TRX pulls, lat pulls, and from there, she's going to go into resistance band rear delt flies. So, I'm going to show you a little version of this if you don't have a TRX at your gym. That's going to come up next. But for those of you who do, this is a great exercise to really manipulate the pull movement and twist those handles around and squeeze your back together. And then from there, we'll go to those. So, we're going to up our reps. So, we've gone from eight reps of three sets. We're going to go 10 reps of three sets for this movement. Sophia, getting nice and low. She's gonna have, the straighter your legs are, the more difficult this is. Yep. And she's going to use her back to squeeze up. Remembering, we don't want to engage our arms here. Sophia's arms are actually disengaged. They're soft. They're going to work to a small degree, but we really want the focus to be on our back. Squeezing, and I can feel all of Sophia's back really engaging at the top of every movement and she's not fully releasing it until she's at the very bottom and then she'll rest. What are we at? Two more. Two more. Nine. One more. I can feel that little back muscle shaking. Ten. Good. So we're going to come up, Ooh. zero rest, and we're going to go straight in to our resistance band pulls. I'm going to get Sophia to face the other way. Yep. That way we can just show you what we're going to be doing. So. Every V taper starts at our shoulders, so we do want to make sure we're creating some nice definition for our rear delts, which then V tapers down into our waist. So squeezing, squeezing, we've got 10. What are we at? Is that four? four? That's it. Five. Six. And you can see, you can see Sophia's little rear delts. That's eight. Nine, one more. Ten. Okay, I'm gonna let Sophia rest while I show you a setup if you don't have a TRX. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust these um, stoppers or like rack holders, barbell holders, sorry, to I'm gonna say, let's go 18. So I'll get Sophia to do her next set on this, but we're coming down we're basically squeezing up and releasing. So it's going to work our back in the same way that the TRX does, but it's just a really simple and easy setup for gyms that don't necessarily have your TRX available. Little rest, yeah. and then we're gonna go back. All right, round two. Are you oh. ready? <laughs> Let's go, she's had a rest, and we do count her rest. So I'm giving her 60 seconds rest in between each round. But in between each exercise superset, we're not really resting. We're kind of transitioning straight away. 10 reps. So again, we're really focusing on squeezing at the top of the movement. Nice work, Thea. Squeezing, and we've got 10. Three down, please. Now you can probably even stretch your legs out a little bit straighter and make it a little bit harder. That's it, Emma. Four. Good. Five, that's it. Seven. Eight. It is so much harder when you when you um, don't like have your feet out. So if you are looking for more of a challenge, stretch those legs. Ooh. All right, straight up here, straight up. Grabbing your band, and you've got ten. 
Yep, you can use shoes one. One, that's it. And she's keeping her elbows nice and high. <laughs> Nice work, girl. Okay, she's got one more round. So we, again, 10, 10 reps, three sets, and then we're gonna move to our next exercise. All right, girls, next super set. We basically got Sophia doing resistance band lat push downs with single arm row using a kettlebell. So we're gonna be honest, we have tried to use the heavier resistance band that we, had done, we were doing for the blocks but it was a little bit too difficult for Sophia. And that is something that's really important to know when you're doing any kind of movement in the gym is if something is feeling too heavy, go a lighter weight because at the end of the day, form and technique is going to be what gets you the best results and the most, the quickest results. If you're not performing something in the utmost way, in the best way you can, you're not going to see as quick results just because you're not going to be targeting those muscles as effectively as what you could if you've got correct form. So we have dropped to a lighter resistance band. This one is a medium. And we're going to get her doing her lat push downs with this. 12 reps. So again, we've increased our reps as our sets have gone on, but we have gone a lighter resistance. And Sophia's squeezing in. Sophia, honestly, come even in a little bit closer to the, to the band. Yep. Even a little bit closer. I want you to step quite close to me. Yep, because that's going to help with lighter resistance. Three. So, also, Sophia is quite fatigued at this point. We have been hitting some really hard reps with some really challenging exercises. So, you're going to be feeling it a little bit at this point. So, from there, minimal rest, we're going to go straight into kettlebell single arm rows. So grabbing your kettlebell, and Sophia's just gonna use this pole as her like lean point. Start with your right. Yeah, here we go. Yep. Sophia's left-handed. So Sophia starts with her right because it is her weaker arm, and I always recommend starting with the weaker side. And when you're doing a row, remember you're coming up and you're basically pulling it in, getting that elbow there, yeah, that's good. So we've got six each side. Three, four, that's it, squeezing, squeezing, five, six, good, and switching over. I find with rows, I mean, you don't have to use something to lean against, you can just do it as a row, but I find leaning against something and going really parallel helps with my movement and my lower back support. Back. Okay guys, I just had Sophia finish her last two sets of the final exercises for her back. What I am going to do before we finish is take you through a little back burnout um, with a resistance band. So nothing too hard, but just something to really finish off Sophia's back. And then we're going to do just a tiny little bit of core work to really finish off our you know, upper hourglass workout. Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Okay, guys, look, I'm being honest. If you don't have the energy to complete this finish out now that you've done all of your working sets, you don't have to. But if you do have a little bit left in the tank, this is a great way to just finish off your back. So we're going to do a super set of exercises just using a resistance band. So we're going to kind of be going over the muscles that we've already worked and just kind of finish them off with a lighter load, doing lat pull downs straight into single arm rear delt flies. So, starting up, doing your lat pull down, you've got 10, and from there, from 10 of those, Sophia's gonna go straight into her single arm rear delt flies, 10 each. We're gonna do two sets. Once Sophia's done those, I'm gonna put her through a little bit of a core workout and we are all done and dusted. Let's go. To finish off, we're going to be doing a little bit of core. So with this exercise, some of you may have heard of vacuums. Vacuums are a contraction core exercise. So they really work on, I guess, 
having you learn how to really contract and tighten your waist in, it's not going to necessarily shrink your waist, but it is going to teach those core muscles to hold yourself in and nice and tight. So it is going to help with the illusion of that nice V taper with our back into our waist. I love vacuums and I do genuinely really feel them the day after I do them. But each to their own, if this isn't something that you like, that is also okay. But I love including these into my workouts. So let's show you how to do these. We are essentially vacuuming our stomach. And we're really, as we vacuum our stomach, we're contracting our core and our abdominal muscles in. So without further ado, Sophia's gonna go onto all fours and you're not, it's not the breathing. So you're not sucking your stomach in through breath. You're contracting your abdominal muscles in and that's tightening your waist. So we're gonna do a 30 second time, starting in 10 seconds. And Sophia's basically just gonna contract, hold for 10 and then release. I wanna see Sophia breathing through this movement. So contract in. I wanna feel you breathing, but I wanna feel those muscles nice and tight. Squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And quick release and tighten in even more. That's it. So I'm gonna get Sophia to do five 30 seconds rounds and that's gonna be the end of the workout. But it's just a great little way to finish off your upper body hourglass. Three, two, one, feeling nice and tight. 10 seconds rest and then Sophia will jump back in. Sophia is officially dead and I'm feeling good because I just like took her through the workout but I really hope that you enjoyed that. I love training upper body and I feel like sometimes us girls undervalue it because we're so into training legs and don't get me wrong I love the lower body work but to create that perfect hourglass shape that really enhances our waist and our booty it is important to still incorporate upper body sessions into your week. So I hope that you give this a try and if you do, let me know how it goes. But until next time, kill your workouts and we will see you all in our next vlog. Mwah.